we're going to do a convergence of summation 4 to the n power times n factorial times n factorial, which you could write as n factorial squared if you wanted to, uh, divided by 2n factorial. And I put a parenthesis around the 2n because I want to factorial not the n, but twice n. So you're going to use a ratio. Anytime you have factorial, you have to use a ratio test. So go ahead and see what your factorial skills are made of. And see how well you can reduce this down. And you're going to have to double parenthesize when you go 2n plus 1. Unless you write it as 2n plus 2. You could skip a step. On the board, I haven't done any simplification yet. I just rearranged the fractions. So I paired up things that are similar. So from here, you should be able to start canceling out. You need to expand some of these factorials to start canceling them out. So we got three fractions we got to simplify. So any questions on simplifying the first fraction? You just got one more four on top. So that one's pretty straightforward. The second one, I did the work over here. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. And that will cancel the n factorial on the bottom. And you're going to, I did this squared because there's n plus 1 factorial times n plus 1 factorial and the n factorial, n factorial on the bottom. So I just wrote it squared. What about the last, that third fraction there? What do we do to simplify that down? Just 
almost. So we're going to break out 2m plus 2. And we also have to break out 2m plus 1. And then we're going to have times 2n factorial. So we've got to break out two of them in there. So that's why this 2m plus 2 is a nice form, because I break the 2m plus 2, 2m plus 1, and then just 2n factorial. So I'll do that work right here. So 2n plus 2 factorial is equal to 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial. So that's the algebra that we're going to use over here for the 2n plus 2 factorial. So it's going to be 1 over 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. There's still the uh, 2n factorial, 2n factorial that are going to cancel. Uh, so if you wanted to factor the 2 out, that's a lot harder. Okay. Factoring out a multiple, that's incredibly hard. But a sum is, if, if it's something plus a, an actual number, even if it was plus 20, I could get 20, basically factor 20 of them out. So in this case, it was plus 2, so I did get the plus 2, the plus 1, and then 2n factorial. Yeah, but something like a 3n factorial divided by 2n factorial, that would be really tough. So cancel, cancel, and we'll just rewrite this one time. So write it as 4 times n plus 1 squared, 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. All right, so this is simplified, as good as we're going to get with algebra. So now we're about to apply a limit. So here's our row equals lim n approaches infinity. Um, uh, ooh, we got another 4 here also. Oh, yes, I can do a nice, yeah, factor cancel. Yep. So it's absolutely correct. So let's go a little further in algebra before we write the limits. So we can make this even more simple. So we're going to factor that, a 2 out of there. So we're going to get 4 and plus 1 squared. Two. Nope, we're going to factor a 2 out of the other one that I didn't circle. 2 times n plus 1, 2n plus 1. There we go, like that. OK, that's a little bit nicer. I think we're still going to have some L'Hopital type rule going on. So 4 halves is 2 times n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. And I showed you a few ways to deal with this. We could go L'Hopital's rule. You just need one application of L'Hopital's rule. You're going to have infinity over infinity. L'Hopital's rule derivative, you're going to get 1 half. You could also do the physicist method, which is we got a polynomial over a polynomial. So you compare the highest powers are both degree 1, degree 1. So it's a tie. So it's going to be the ratio of coefficients, 1 over 2, right there. Because that plus 1 doesn't matter anymore when n's really big. So we're going to get 2 times 1 half, which is 1. So what happens when you get row equals 1? Inconclusive. So you just waste a lot of time. So this is inconclusive.
So if this was a quiz and you just ran out of time, this would be worth a couple points. You did successfully apply ratio test. The correct, correct conclusion is I don't know anything. So what can we do if that test is inconclusive? Do another test. So we can do a root test. We need to figure out what is the nth root of n factorial, basically. That's going to be a little bit tricky. So I don't know how to do that off the top of my head. I don't. Did I write it down as a special limit somewhere back here? Well, remember the root test is not a n plus one over a n, so that all that work we did is only applicable to the ratio test. So you can't carry that over to the root test. I'm looking at so I don't I don't see an nth root of n factorial in our common limits from ten one. So we need to figure out what that is if we we're going to have a chance at doing the root test. Uh, but another thing I said is if the ratio test is inconclusive, generally the root test is going to be inconclusive also. So they usually both work on a sequence or they uh, both are inconclusive. So let's look at this. All right, there are some other things we can think about. What are some other tests we have from different chapters? So we've got nth term test for divergence, integral, integral test, limit. and then which? Limit so limit comparison. There's also regular comparison, but generally you're just going to need limit comparison. So I could try limit comparison. Unfortunately, just looking at this series right here, there's no n plus 1. Usually you use the limit comparison when there's a plus or minus something. So I don't really see a good thing to compare this to. So I don't think limit comparison is going to be the best. So that's out. Have I ever taught you how to integrate factorial? Nope, so that's out. So we got one possibility left. Nth term is the only test we have left. So if it passes the nth term test, we know it diverges. If it doesn't pass the nth term test, we give up. All right, so try the nth term test right now. So on this right here, you. So it's 2 plus 0 two. over 2 plus 0. There should be zeros there. Because your derivative of a constant is 0. <laughs> so if you just had to flip back through your notes, your cheat sheet is out of date. Remember to have your cheat sheet out at all times, no matter what you're doing. If we're going to play basketball, cheat sheet. <laughs> Taking a shower, cheat sheet. <laughs> Especially if you're doing your homework problems or in your class, you definitely want your cheat sheet.
Ah, so your wish is granted. We're going to break up a factorial in this way. Maybe that wasn't your wish, but it's what you, at, what you talked about a minute ago. <laughs> All right. So do you believe the way that I broke this down? So the tough part is how many? It's going to be n of them, right? So we got n terms right there. All right, what cancels? Easy to see. N factorial. All right. Excellent. So we're going to need to use a clever estimate. So the good news is, how many terms are in n factorial? n. And there's n on the bottom. So let's try to pair these up. Yes, sir? Why is there not two n terms on the bottom? Because I said so. There is two n terms on the bottom, but n of them are right there. So there absolutely are two n terms on the bottom. All right. So n factorial has n terms, and we have n terms down here. So what I'm going to do is just sort of pair them up. And maybe we'll get some estimate off of that. So we'll go biggest terms. We'll go n over 2n n minus 1 over 2n minus 1, n minus 2 over 2n minus 2, dot, 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 down to, we'll write the last two terms. So we're going to get 2 over n plus 2, 1 over n plus 1. So I haven't done anything crazy yet. By crazy, I mean I'm about to make an estimate after this step, which is, in my opinion, is the hard part. So any questions? Everything here I writ uh, wrote on the board is all equal. And all I did was expand this out and just wrote n factorial as n, n minus 1, n minus 2, dot, 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 and then 2n. Well, you can actually see the factors explicitly on the bottom, right there. So any questions about this expansion? So now the tricky part. So here is, this, this next step is uh, one you need a lot of intuition and experience for. So it's not one that I would expect uh, you to get your first time through calculus too. We could, we could definitely do that. We could definitely cancel those ends right there. Uh, we cannot cancel anywhere else, though, unfortunately. So I'm very tempted to write, to use an estimate of one half for all these right here, and I think that one half will be bigger than all greater than or equal to each term. So let me erase this equal sign. <coughs> so the first one is definitely a half. It cancels, it just reduces to one half. The next one, 
I'm going to put one half in its place. One half. Now, why I say that this is not easy to see, or it's not easy to know to do this, is because we are making an estimate here. So these are not equal. Now, the question is, when I replace each of these by a half, is a half bigger or smaller than each of these terms right here? It's probably easy to compare the last two right here. What is bigger, 1 half or 1 over n plus 1, assuming that n is relatively large? So 1 half is much bigger. Uh, if we look at the next term over, 2 over n plus 2, 1 half is also going to be bigger, as long as n is relatively large. So basically, these terms go from a super tiny number, and they slowly increase up to 1 half. So I'm replacing all of them by 1 half. So what I just did is put something bigger. Now I'm worried that, well, let's keep going. We can take this limit. I'm worried that I estimated the wrong way. All right, so I took out some terms and put in bigger terms. So my limit's going to be bigger or equal to, it's possible it's equal. All right, how many one halves are there? There's n of them. So there's one half to the nth power. Ah. And let's keep this going on the same line because I can keep writing as far as I want to. So this is lim 4 halves, which is 2 to the nth power, which is definitely infinity. So after the estimate, are there any questions? So let's scroll back to our estimate. So we got that the limit is less than or equal to infinity. How helpful is that? That's not very helpful. That doesn't narrow it down at all. So I made the wrong estimate. So I, yes, I did overestimate, except my overestimate was, had an infinite limit. So we know our actual limit's going to be infinity or less. Kind of knew that beforehand, though. So that's not the best estimate. So I would like to show that this is greater than 0, and then I can say it diverges. If it equals 0, I can't say it's inconclusive again. So I'd like a lower estimate that has a limit that's greater than 0. So I want to replace them by something smaller. The numerator is getting larger faster than the denominator. Oh, you mean in the original an? Yeah. Uh, but the other problem is there's four to the n hanging out there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one diverges, uh, but we need to use the nth term test successfully to say so. All right, so I may have to read the book. The book just does the ratio test, and at the end they end up with 2n plus 2 over 2n plus 1. And you just sense, say since the numerator is larger, it means it diverges. Because it means the terms don't go towards 0. 
QN. So they have to go towards zero. It has to, you compare with one. I'm worried that with their... They just say since the next term is always greater than the last term. Oh, so they compare... Yeah, they just compare the top. Okay, so... So if we wanted to show an plus 1 is greater than an, so your sequence is, your terms are getting bigger, that would also show divergence. So tiny little bit of algebra, divide by an. Right? As long as an is greater than 0, you can do that and not worry about flipping your sign around. All right, and we just showed that this is somewhere 2n plus 2 over 2n plus 1. Now, when n is really big, this is greater than 1, but it's really close to 1. Yes, the limit is 1, but it is super close to 1, or it's, it's bigger than 1. So each term gets bigger. Right, so each term is bigger than the last. The previous term. This will work as long as a n is not 0 or negative. And if we look, I think there's no way we can get negative. Where's our a n? Somewhere. A n. Yeah, as long as, I didn't write where it starts, but even if you start back, way back at zero, you're still going to have zero factorial, which is one. So no matter where you start n, you're not going to be divided by zero. So we could write down a1 pretty easily. So a1 will be four times something, four times one factorial times one factorial divided by 2 factorial, which is 2. So the first term will be 2. And then every term after that is 2 or more. So each AK is greater than 2. So that means summation a k is greater than or equal to summation a whole lot of twos. So what happens if you add up infinite twos? Infinity. So there we go. So I think this is the just regular comparison test we actually use right here, technically. So this is the standard comparison test. So we knew that adding up an infinite number of twos was going to be infinity. And AK is slightly more than two. Each term is slightly more than two. They get really close to two, but they don't get close to zero. So that's probably not the problem you want in your quiz or final exam. All right, last example. This is number four or five. Number five, yes. 
that was 4. So we're on 5. We'll do 1 over 1 plus n to the nth power. So why is this a good candidate for the root test? Yeah, power is the nth power. So if I do a 1 over nth power of this term, that'll cancel out the nth power. So it's a really good candidate for the root test. So what we need is the nth root of a n, which is a n to the 1 over n power. So this is a really easy root test problem. So you should be able to knock this out in about 30 seconds. So all you need to do is take a limit of this a n to the 1 over n. So simplify it with algebra first, take a limit second, and then tell me what row is. Alright, so you should have gotten convergence, rho equals zero. So root test questions. Don't worry about what I just wrote. I'll explain that in a minute. So root test, good to go. Alright. So we have convergence. There is another way to solve this. I made an estimate here. When n is big, uh, this is definitely less than or equal to one over two to the n. So you think n, uh, when n is 1, these are equal. When n is 2, this is 1 third. It is smaller than 1 half. And n is 3, it's even smaller, even smaller, even smaller. Why does this series on the right converge? What type of series is this? Geometric, Geometric with the r less than 1. So it's a convergent geometric series. And it's bigger than R series. So we got a convergent one that's bigger, so R series has to also converge. And you could say it's not going to go negative infinity. It's never going to be negative. So you're going to add up uh, if a number of these, and it has to converge. So this is converged by the comparison test. So I think it is good to see that you can use different tests to get your conclusions. You don't have to always go with ratio tests. Although ratio is generally the most useful, there are lots of other um, alternative tests you can use. That is the end of root ratio test. And up next we have alternating series test. Now, alternating series is very, it, there's just three things you have to pass. They're all very easy to check. And if you pass them, then you're convergent. So I'm just going to write down the test right here.
So there's three things you have to pass. You have to alternate. So the series alternates signs. There's two ways to sort of giveaways that alternate signs. One of them is it has negative one to the n or any negative number to the nth power. So that will go positive, negative, positive, negative when n goes even, odd, even, odd. There's another one. It is cosine of pi n is another way to get alternating. So there's two ways to get alternating. All right, so you need an alternating sign. You need the terms get smaller. So what that looks like is a n plus 1 is less than a n. But this is not This is going to have problems when things are negative. So what we do is just absolute value both sides. And then we don't have to worry about negatives. So this says that nth plus 1 term is smaller than the one that came before it. Uh, the third thing you need is lim. n approaches infinity. a n equals 0. Now, just to warn you, the limit approach uh, of an equals 0 is not sufficient in general for a series to converge. So if you fail number 3, you automatically diverge. So the opposite of number 3 is automatic divergence. Now, if your limit is 0 and you satisfy these other two properties, then you can say convergent. So if you pass all three, you converge. So we'll do the alternating harmonic series. So that's summation 1 over n times negative 1 to the nth power. And I better not start at 0, so we'll start at 1 and go to infinity. All you have to do is check 1, 2, and 3. And you should be able to check those pretty easily. And the reason we have absolute value is basically that negative 1 to the n will disappear when we do the absolute value on number 2. So go ahead and write down why does it pass 1, 2, and 3. So fractions can be a little tricky. The n plus 1 absolute value is 1 over n plus 1. A n absolute value is 1 over n. And why is 1 over n plus 1 smaller than 1 over n? Because the denominator is bigger, so your fraction is smaller. So it's a little tricky when you have, you know, you're basically looking at reciprocals, or you think about reciprocals. All right, step three, a very easy limit. Uh, and you could go absolute value of the limit if you want to. So limit n approaches infinity. Negative 1 to the n times 1 over n equals, so we know 1 over infinity right there is going to be 0. So I don't, the negative 1 to the nth power doesn't change that. It's going to be 0. So it's really, the reason it goes to 0 is because the 1 over n approaches 0. 
All right, so we pass alternating series tests, so we converge by the alternating series.